What's up, YouTube? Coming at you guys with another video here. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted uh, a real video. Um, haven't been out to the garage as much as I would like, but lately I have been getting out here more. Spring is in the air. I got things I want to get done, including finishing the motor for Ron Jeremy, the 360 budget build. Small block that I'm putting together, if you've been following along on the channel. But um, I wanted to post a video about these Speedmaster small block Mopar cylinder heads that I acquired to go on to that said small block. Um, I purchased these cylinder heads on Black Friday uh, through Speedmaster. If you're familiar with them at all, they have a pretty killer uh, Black Friday sale. So I purchased these heads fully assembled along with their stainless steel 1-6 ratio rocker arms and the grand total i believe in like us dollars was like 850 in canadian for two cylinder heads and rocker arms with our horrible exchange rate it was under a thousand dollars for these heads i think it was like 960 bucks um which is crazy uh, and, you know, maybe five, ten years ago, I would have never purchased purchased a, a set of overseas castings cylinder heads. Um, but that's different now. Um, and if you're watching this video, you're probably interested in these heads. Um, and, you know, thinking about whether they would work for you. Uh, I think the quality on cylinder heads from overseas has gone up quite a bit. Um, from, you know, when they first originated, uh, you know, Speedmaster sells these heads bare, which I know a lot of guys prefer to buy them bare and load them up with their own valves and, um, you know, uh, valve springs and whatnot. They can check the guides. They can do any, uh, chamber work that they'd like. Um, but they also offer them fully assembled like this. So this set of heads is the, the basic, uh, 170cc intake runner set uh they got 65 cc chambers combustion chambers right and as i said i could have ordered these bare or set up for a hydraulic flat tappet cam or a hydraulic roller i chose hydraulic flat tappet and i'll talk a little bit about that in a minute they also sell a cnc ported version of these which i believe i could be wrong they're like a 190 or a 195 cc intake runner and again you can buy those bare and i believe you can buy those loaded with um valves and valve springs as well but nonetheless uh for what i am doing in terms of the build of this engine these fit the bill uh like perfectly uh the heads that came off the 360 were i had no idea um a 177 intake valve 318 head i didn't even know chrysler made intake valves that small uh in their cylinder heads so i sold those locally for about 300 bucks and i paid uh, you know, 950 or so, 960 or so for these with rocker arms. So, you know, a little over $600 into a set of aluminum heads. Uh, they didn't need, you know, the other heads were going to need work. I'd have to up the valve sizes. And even then, you know, I'm working with old cast iron that's heavy. Um, and the ports are just not as good as these aftermarket type castings. So that's why I went with these. Um... So you might notice in the back here, I already have, I have this head disassembled. I did not disassemble this head yet. Um, so what I've been doing, okay, um, in terms of disassembly. Now, I'm no machinist. I'm no expert. And, you know, I'm kind of doing this in the spirit of someone who doesn't have a lot of money but wants to buy some aftermarket parts to put together in their garage, Um so I figure, you know, a guy like that might have access to a valve spring compressor like I have here. So what I have been doing is taking off the valve springs and partly because um, I'm going to be installing them with the inner spring removed for cam break-in. Um, I am running a solid flat tap at camshaft. And because of that, you typically don't want to break in a solid flat tap at with a double spring it's a little hard on the lobes so that's part of why um i'm disassembling them but i just wanted to go through and check the valves take a look at the actual valve springs themselves 
So um, I do not have a valve spring tester, but I did see someone else on YouTube test these springs. They are a little heavy for a hydraulic flat tappet. Maybe even a little heavy for a solid flat tappet unless it's an all-out race combination. Uh, I believe the installed height on these is 1.9. And I think the spring pressures are somewhere around 145 and 360. 360 or 330. I'll post it up on this section of the video um, if I'm wrong with those numbers. Um, you know, open and close pressures for the valve spring. So a little bit heavy for the solid flat tappet that I'm going to be running, but I'm hoping I'll be okay. Uh, but the hardware on these is really nice. The retainers are nice. It's got nice 10 degree locks. Um, you know, upon disassembly, you know, nice valve seals. Uh, you know, I don't feel any real play in any of the valves. There are shims um, on the valve spring seats here. Um, just to get to that correct installed height, you know. Uh, your bolt holes for your uh, intake and exhaust, they're helicoiled. coiled um, you know, everything appear, appears to be flat. I did run a straight edge on these surfaces. Um, I, I didn't notice anything with my naked eye that looked bad or off. Um, you know, so for the price, these were kind of hard to, to not go with. Um, I don't think they are a 100% copy of an Edelbrock performer head, but, you know, they are close. That's where the inspiration came from. I know a lot of people, um, I'll probably get hate on this video for even talking about these, you know, because a lot of guys just don't agree with buying these overseas parts. But, you know, with the way things are in today's world and what things cost and this hobby being as expensive as it is, I think these cylinder heads do fill a void, as I said, for kind of a do-it-yourselfer, maybe mild performance uh, to, you know, semi-serious, because ported, I think these things can flow a little bit more than those Edelbrock uh, performer heads. They could probably support uh, ported, I would imagine, anywhere between 500 to 600 horsepower, but, you know, after that, I'm not sure... Um, that they're really your best choice. Um, you know, when you've got things out there like the Indy 360-2s, dash ones, you've got your W8s, W9s, trick flows. So there's some really good cylinder heads out there for small block Mopars. But again, this is to fill uh, that void that I was talking about. Um, so, you know, for what I'm doing, get some weight off the nose of a pretty heavy car, get the compression up. Uh, let the engine breathe better and hopefully make some more power. Um, I'm going to let me just see here if I can flip this guy over while holding the camera. That's another thing. <laughs> if you ever lifted an aluminum head before, or sorry, a factory cast iron head, these things feel like feathers compared to them. Um, but, I mean, you know, they look, again, I, this is just my naked eye, right? But I pushed the valves out and I checked, uh, well, this is the head that's assembled still, so I can't do it. Oops, maybe I should have put that one in front. Um, but, you know, I checked the seats visually, uh, the valve seats, you know, everything looks pretty good. I, I can't complain. Um, one thing I have heard is that the push rod holes... Um, will most likely need to be uh, opened up. So those would be, uh, if I'm not mistaken here, where are we? All right, so your push rod holes, those guys there, right? So they may need to be opened up. Um, I will find out once I measure for push rods and get my push rods. Um, so that might be something I would have to do in terms of modifications, but that's not really anything too serious. It's pretty common, actually, for most cylinder heads, um, depending on your camshaft and your valve train geometry, to have to clear it's your push rod holes a little bit. Um, what else? What else about these? Yeah, I mean, for the price, I think they're decent quality components. 
Uh, Ten years ago, I probably would have never bought these. Five years ago, I probably wouldn't have bought them assembled. But I read a lot of reviews from guys who have used these, um, saying that they're happy, you know, with with with, and they've put some miles on them and they've raced with them. So I felt pretty confident to pull the trigger on them, and hopefully, I have similar luck like they do. Um, you might also be wondering why these aren't on the engine yet. So here is the one downfall, and I guess it's not really the cylinder head's fault actually. So as I said. I also purchased a set of these Speedmaster rocker arms. I have the rockers on right now. I, I don't even, I just have these, uh, the hold downs just started. They're not snug or anything like that. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to show this to you guys is to tell you why I don't have these on the engine yet. And that is because of this issue here so hopefully, i wonder if you can see it there um when these are tightened down um so the body of the rocker arm makes contact with the retainer so that's obviously an issue on some it's worse than others you can see here it's it's touching pretty much the whole way. Um, there's also an issue with how the shaft sits in the stands. Um, doesn't look bad right now, but when you start to try and bring things down, it's not exactly great. So I am ordering, after taking a whole bunch of measurements... A rocker arm geometry correction kit um, from Mike at B3 Racing Engines. Um, he specializes in making these kits for the small block Mopar. I will be honest, when I ordered these cylinder heads and rockers, I did not know this was an issue. And I probably would not have ordered these rocker arms if I had known that. But they were paid for, they were shipped. So here we are making them work. Uh, as far as the rocker arms go, I got them all on the shaft there too. Let me just take one off and show you guys up close. So, come on, buddy. All right, so they are bushed on the inside. Um, I did disassemble them. I cleaned them uh, well, and then with some compressed air. Um, you know, but the adjusters seem nice. The tip of the roller on all of them was spinning freely. You know, a little bit of side to side play, but nothing like excessive that seemed like there was an issue, possibly with um, the rollers in there. I think the early versions of these overseas rocker arms actually had needle bearings in here, which um, could potentially fail, and you know if they come out in your engine, um, and you got some pretty big problems on your hands. So I like that these are bushed. Um, I mean, these were I think a hundred and twenty dollars or something like that on Black Friday. You know, you can see the casting isn't perfect. But they are similar to, um, if you guys are familiar with the brand PRW, they make stainless rocker arms. And from what I've been told, these are very similar, if not a copy of those rocker arms. And guys, have good luck with them. Uh, I think on other cylinder heads, these rocker arms work properly, per se. Maybe if I was running a beehive spring with, um, you know... At the retainer that wasn't so wide, I wouldn't have this issue. But with these double springs that the cylinder heads come assembled with, they do not just bolt on and go. So I am waiting for that kit after taking all those measurements from Mike at B3 Racing. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting them, or getting it. Assembling these cylinder heads, throwing them on the motor, checking, you know, piston to valve clearance, uh, checking for push rod length. See how much lift I actually get out of my cam with these 1-6 ratio rocker arms. 
And uh, then, you know, it'll be the final bolt down of these heads once the push rods come and uh, the engine will be assembled. So I just wanted to give you guys this quick little, you know, overview, I guess. Not really a real review because I am not a machinist. I also have not actually ran these heads yet. Uh, but from what I can see, the castings do look nice. Uh, for those of you guys who are on the fence about getting the assembled cylinder heads from Speedmaster, if that's something you're considering, the hardware is nice. Um, everything appears to look good. The rocker arms, they seem to be nice for the price, but I mean, if you've got to go and spend another couple of hundred dollars to correct the geometry on them, I am not sure how good of a buy they are. But if you're considering those rocker arms for another application, or another cylinder head, I should say, they might fit the bill. Uh, and yeah, that's it, guys. So hopefully, uh, pretty soon, I'll have a video with these heads bolted down onto the engine, taking some measurements for final engine assembly on the 360 Small block budget build for the wagon. Ron Jeremy. Sitting over there. Waiting for me to get to it. Don't mind the mess. Been doing some wiring for the... Uh, scamp over here. Hiding away. Anyways. Stay tuned guys. Hopefully you find that helpful. And uh, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. If you'd consider these for your small block Mopar. Peace.